How an Unbeliever Became a Christian Orthodox Bishop, Metropolitan Anthony Bloom of England. I'll leave a link below so you can see a very interesting video. This is a man who was born in Switzerland of Russian parents. And when he was about 17, 18 years old, living in Russia during the communist era, he was so dismayed with people and life that he had decided, as he told his, his uh, friends, that he found no meaning in life from what he saw around him. Everything was very unreal and inhuman. And he had decided to take his own life because he didn't want to live like that. Well, what happened was that one of his friends who would go to a Bible study class that was uh, headed by uh, an incognito Orthodox monk, priest, priest monk, told the priest monk that his friend, Anthony, in this case, was in trouble, that he was really depressed and he wanted to take his own life because of the way things were, uh, were people were living, uh, the way people were living in uh, Russia, in the communist Russia. Um, the corruption, the sinfulness, the inhumanity of everything. So uh, what happened is that this priest monk, dressed in his worldly clothes as a layman, uh, went to visit the young Anthony and gave him a book of the New Testament, which was of course illegal because if he was found to be carrying the Holy Bible with him, he would have been thrown in jail as some uh, gulag somewhere in Siberia. But this young priest monk gave a gift of the Holy Bible, the New Testament, to this teenager, Anthony, and told him to read it. And Anthony decided to try. Um, he opened up at the book of Matthew and the moment he started reading it, he had what he called a spiritual experience. And let's remember that he was in no way at all faithful. He was not baptized. He was not a Christian. He was... Uh, in despair and dismay and he had a spiritual experience at that point he saw in front of him in his room the uh, actual person of our Lord Jesus Christ and uh, that changed everything from that moment on of course he believed and uh, he went on after that to become a doctor. He was a surgeon. And uh, later on, he decided to uh, consecrate his life to the work of God and become a priest, a priest monk. And he was later given the position, of course, because of the fact that he spoke uh, French and English uh, perfectly well. And you'll hear it in the uh, video I will leave below for you, his vocabulary and his... Um, he's all, he has written many, many books, uh, theological orthodox books. Uh, he uh, was given the position of being the bishop of the uh, Christian Orthodox Church in England, the Russian Orthodox Church outside of Russia, which was exiled from Russia before the... Uh, during the time of the communist era. A lot of bishops left Russia because otherwise they would have been forced to do the will of the communist regime, which they did not want to do. So many uh, uh, sort of split themselves away from that, the church that remained there because that uh, they were bending to the wills of the regime of the communist uh, dictatorship, but not the church outside of Russia. They, they kept the doctrines of uh, the 
Christian Orthodox Church, from of which uh, Metropolitan Anthony Bloom of London, England, was a member. I was uh, fortunate enough to have found one of his books. It was called How to Pray, and it was a little white little book uh, with just plain letters on, on the outside, How to Pray, and I picked it up and uh, one day I started reading it. And I remember it told you how to pray, like a formula, like how to make a cake. Uh, you uh, go into your room, be uh, having quiet, solitude, uh, making sure that you will not have, not have any interruptions, don't have any phones or televisions going on in the background, and uh, to pray. And usually you can kneel at your bedside and put a cross on your mattress and um, elbows on the mattress and start praying with the cross in front of you. And you start with the creed and the, um, our Father and start to pray. And he said that, remember though, that anything that happens during prayer is under the uh, hand of God. Uh, in that he was actually forewarning us that as we see in the Old and the New Testament, at times of prayer are where uh, we have spiritual experiences. Uh, and that's what happens when you do that, when you pray. You have spiritual experiences. Now, uh, at, uh, he also says that, don't forget though, you're speaking to Christ, God, Christ, Jesus Christ, but give him a few moments of silence at the end so that it would be, instead of a monologue of you speaking to him, that he has a chance to speak to you. In other words, he says, in your solitude, you will be uh, given uh, uh, a sense of peace and tranquility, joy and love. And he says, when you get up from your prayer, go to the mirror and look at your face. At the end of your prayer, you will see that your countenance will be much healthier. Your uh, uh, face will be much more peaceful and you may even look healthier. And don't be surprised if people come up to you uh, that same day or a few days later and say to you, what are you doing? You look changed, you look much better because they will notice it on you too and they will witness it to you. Uh, now, another thing that he wrote in this little book, How to Pray, was to make sure that in our prayers to forgive our enemies. He says you must forgive your enemies and do this in your prayers. Well, I tried that at one point in time uh, with a neighbor of mine that was really being very irksome with us uh, to the point that we believed that she was doing black magic to us uh, because a lot of people do that. You know, I, we didn't know why she was doing that, but we found melted red wax thrown on our car and the red wax was coming from her driveway. And we figured, well, the red wax that splattered on our car, what, who did that? Who would do that? And we saw the drippings coming from her driveway that were leading to, you know, coming from her house. And uh, things started going on. And uh, basically at that point in time, I was basically just uh, uh, finding my way back to Christian Orthodoxy. But anyway, going back to uh, what happened, I, with a heavy heart, uh, three times I remember I prayed for this woman with a heavy heart three times, because she was always screaming at us, always making problems for us. There was always police cars coming to her house every two weeks, something was going on with her family. Um, terrible situation. But anyway, uh, with a heavy heart, I prayed for her three times. And I remembered it was actually three times. And after that, something happened. A very weird situation, but I won't go into that. Uh, and she came and uh, apologized to me personally in front of my family 
saying, you know, I've done a lot of harm to you. Uh, I said, no, you have not done anything to me. She said, oh, you don't know what I've done to you. And she basically was trying to confess that she had so done something bad to me. I don't know. I, I didn't want to go into that. My children were standing next to me, my husband, my mother-in-law. And uh, it was exactly what was written in the book of Metropolitan Anthony, Anthony Bloom, Bloom, How to Pray. He says, don't be surprised when you pray for your enemies that they will come and at one point confess to you or ask you to forgive them because they're sorry because God will allow this to happen so that he will embed in you he will prove to you that prayers for our enemies are not in vain there are improvements in the lives of those who are a thorn on, on, onto our side. Anyway, that was my experience with one of my first books that I wrote, uh, that I read, uh, written by Metropolitan Anthony Bloom, who, as we said, was a sinner and very far from God and turned out to be, I believe, he was a living saint. Of course, he's not canonized yet, but that does not take away my um, idea of him as being a living saint. I'll leave a link below for you. Uh, you can hear, this is a, a 1973 um, CBC interview uh, that they had of him. It's about 25 minutes, but it's worth you uh, listening to it. And you'll find a lot of other interesting YouTube lectures and discussions that he has on various topics that you might find interesting, like suffering, the saints, how to pray, um, dividedness of uh, Christianity, various other things. And you could look through what uh, he has to say there as well. Just a bit about his life. He was born June 19th, 1914 in Switzerland, Lusain, Lusain, Switzerland, to Xenia and Boris Edvardovich Bloom. On his mother's side, he was the nephew of the composer Alexander Skribia, Skriabin. He spent his early childhood in Russia and Iran. His parents were Russian and Iranian. During the Russian Revolution, the family had to leave Iran, and by 1923, they were settled in Paris, where he was educated. He graduated in physics, chemistry, and biology, and took his doctorate in medicine at the University of Paris. By his own words, he met Christ when he was a teenager. Quote, I met Christ as a person at the moment when I needed him in order to live and at the moment when I was not in search of him, I was found. I did not find him. I was a teenager then. Life had been difficult in the early years, and now it had all of a sudden become easier. All the years when life had been hard, I had found it natural, if not easy, to fight. But when life became easy and happy, I was faced quite unexpectedly with a problem. I could not accept aimless happiness. Hardships and suffering had to be overcome. There was something beyond them. Happiness seemed to be stale if it had no further meaning. As it often happens when you are young and when you act with passion, bent to possess either everything or nothing, I decided that I would give myself a year to see whether life had a meaning. And if I discovered it had none, I would not live beyond the year. His career. 1939, before leaving for the front as a surgeon in the French army, he secretly professed monastic, monastic vows in the Russian Orthodox Church. So he became a, um, a monk while he was a doctor. In 1943, he was tonsured and received the name of Antony. During the occupation of France by Nazi Germany, he worked as a doctor and took part in the French resistance. After the war, he continued practicing as a physician until 1948, when he was ordained to the Presbyterian as, and sent to Britain to serve as Orthodox Christian Chaplain of the Fellowship of St. Alban and St. Sergius, a society established to foster understanding and friendship between Russian Orthodox and Anglican churches. In 1950, he was appointed Vicar of the Russian Patriarchal Parish in London. In 57, he was consecrated as Bishop and as Archbishop in 1962 in charge of the Russian Orthodox Church in Great Britain and Ireland. 
In 63, he was appointed Exarch of the Moscow Patriarchate in Western Europe, and in 1966 was assigned the rank of Metropolitan Bishop. In 1974, by mutual agreement, he was released from the function of Exarch in order to devote himself more fully to the pastoral deeds of the growing flock of his diocese. Between 1966 and 86, he brought out six books on prayer. That's one of the books that I read, as, we, as I told you beforehand, and I put it to use. In the summer of 2003, Bloom resigned as diocesan bishop, and he died August 4th of 2003. His grave is in Brompton Cemetery in London, and is visited by Christians and many others. The honors he received, he received honorary doctorates from the University of Aberdeen for preaching the word of God and renewing the spirit life, spiritual life of this country. From the Moscow Theological Academy for his theological pastoral and preaching work, from the University of Cambridge, and from the Kiev Theological Academy. I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you.